Hi there, health enthusiasts. Ever wondered, what are the best sources of protein? This question has been the center of many debates among health enthusiasts. The answer isn't as easy as listing a few foods. It's much more complex. It's about understanding where our protein comes from and the importance of choosing proteins from sources that are raised or grown naturally. Consider this. Humans have practiced agriculture for approximately 10,000 years, a relatively brief period compared to the 300,000 years that Homo sapiens have existed. Looking further back in our evolutionary history, Homo erectus, our close relative, existed for nearly 2 million years. Thus, the 10,000 years of agricultural practice represent only a small fraction of our species' history, indicating that humans have had a limited time to adapt to a diet based on cultivated grains and other plant foods. Cattle, for instance, were domesticated around the same time. These creatures, descendants of aurochs, were naturally equipped to digest grass, not grains. Yet, today, most cows are fed a diet rich in grains, which is far from their natural diet. This shift from a natural diet has a significant impact on the nutrient density of the protein source. For instance, when cows eat grass, their meat and fat are higher in B vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, minerals, and antioxidants. In contrast, grain-fed cows often have lower nutrient quality. The same applies to other protein sources. Whether it's poultry, fish, or plant-based proteins, the way they are raised or grown has a profound effect on their nutrient density. Human intervention, in the form of commercial farming or genetic modification, often lowers this nutrient density. So the question is not just about what the best protein sources are. It's also about how these sources are raised or grown. It's about choosing protein sources that are as close to their natural environment as possible. Sure, it might be more expensive to opt for pasture-raised, organic, or wild-caught sources. But remember, you're not just paying for the protein. You're paying for the quality of nutrients that come with it. As we proceed, we'll rank seven protein sources from worst to best, giving you a clearer picture of where you should get your protein. So, buckle up for an exciting journey into the world of proteins, their sources, and their nutrient densities. Starting our list at number seven, we have soy. The origins of soy are intriguing, dating back over two and a half millennia. Interestingly, it wasn't a popular food choice due to the digestive discomfort it caused, such as gas and bloating. Instead, it served as a valuable resource for enriching other plant crops. It wasn't until the advent of fermentation that people began to incorporate soy into their diets. Fast forward to the early 20th century, and the multifaceted nature of soy was championed by none other than Henry Ford. He saw the industrial potential in this humble legume and even went as far as creating a prototype car made from soybeans. And here's a fun fact for you. Soybeans are a key ingredient in the production of crayons. Each year, around 75,000 pounds of soybeans are used to add color to our drawings and doodles. Despite these fascinating uses, soy comes with its fair share of drawbacks when consumed as a protein source. First and foremost, it's not easily digestible which can lead to discomfort and bloating. Secondly, it's packed with anti-nutrients like phytic acids and trypsin inhibitors that can interfere with the absorption of essential nutrients. Lastly, soy contains high levels of phytoestrogens and xenoestrogens, compounds that mimic the hormone estrogen in the body. This can potentially disrupt hormonal balance, leading to a range of health issues. So yes, while soy is a complete protein, Boasting all nine essential amino acids, it's not as bioavailable as animal protein. This means that our bodies may struggle to fully utilize the protein we consume from soy. The potential for digestive disruption and hormonal imbalances also makes it a less than ideal choice for our protein needs. Remember, it's not just about the quantity of protein, but also the quality. And in the case of soy, the quality leaves a lot to be desired. At number six, we have a popular choice these days. Plant proteins. Plant proteins have been gaining traction in recent years, becoming a staple for many, especially those following vegetarian or vegan diets. On the surface, they seem like a viable alternative to animal-based proteins. They're affordable, readily available, and often marketed as a healthier choice. But let's delve a little deeper. One of the main drawbacks of plant proteins is their inferior amino acid profiles when compared to their animal-based counterparts. 
Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And while our bodies can make some of them, there are nine that we must get from our diets. These are known as the essential amino acids. Animal proteins are complete because they contain all nine of these essential amino acids in sufficient quantities. Unfortunately, most plant proteins can't make the same claim. Another downside to plant proteins is the presence of anti-nutrients. These are naturally occurring compounds that can interfere with the absorption of nutrients in our bodies. Phytic acid, for instance, can bind to minerals like calcium, iron, and zinc, preventing our bodies from fully benefiting from these nutrients. The third con to consider is the potential for heavy metal contamination. A study by the Clean Label Project found that many plant-based protein powders contained concerning levels of heavy metals such as lead, mercury, and cadmium, as well as other contaminants like BPA. Even products labeled as organic were not exempt from this issue. Despite these cons, it's important to remember that not all plant proteins are created equal. Some, like quinoa and buckwheat, are complete proteins, and steps can be taken to reduce the impact of anti-nutrients, such as soaking, sprouting, or fermenting these foods. Despite their popularity, finding a clean plant-based protein is crucial, and even then, they may still lack in certain nutritional aspects. So while plant proteins can be part of a balanced diet, they shouldn't be your sole source of protein, especially if you're looking to optimize your nutrient intake. Next on our list at number five, we have chicken and poultry. Let's talk turkey and chicken and quail and any other poultry you might fancy. Poultry is a protein powerhouse. It's a complete protein, which means it contains all nine essential amino acids that our bodies can't produce on their own. These amino acids are vital for our body's growth, repair, and overall maintenance. A chicken breast, for instance, can provide a hefty dose of these essential nutrients. However, before you run off to your nearest supermarket to stock up on chicken, there are some considerations to keep in mind. Most of the poultry available in your average grocery store is fed on a diet of corn or grains. This diet leads to high levels of linoleic acid in the meat, which can cause inflammation and weight gain when consumed in large amounts. The feed for these grain-fed birds is often low in quality, requiring additional supplementation to meet their nutritional needs. So, what's the solution? Enter pasture-raised poultry. Unlike their grain-fed counterparts, these birds are allowed to roam free and forage for their natural diet. As a result, the meat they produce has a healthier fat profile and is packed with more nutrients. Opting for pasture-raised poultry not only benefits your health, but also supports more humane and sustainable farming practices. And here's a fun fact to impress your friends at your next dinner party. Chickens are the closest living relatives to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Yes, you heard it right. The bone structure and genetic makeup of chickens have striking similarities to this king of the dinosaurs. So the next time you're enjoying a chicken dinner, remember you're dining on descendants of the mighty T-Rex. In conclusion, when it comes to poultry, think quality over quantity. Choosing pasture-raised poultry can provide a healthier fat profile and more nutrients, making it a better choice. Coming in at number four, we have pork. A popular choice for many, pork provides a complete protein, meaning it contains all nine essential amino acids our bodies need, but can't produce on their own. It's an excellent source of many vitamins and minerals, including vitamin B6, thiamine, niacin, and selenium. These nutrients are vital for a plethora of bodily functions, from energy metabolism to cognitive functions and immune health. However, just like with poultry, there are concerns when it comes to commercially raised pork. Most commercial pork is grain-fed, which can lead to an elevated level of omega-6 fatty acids. While omega-6 fatty acids are essential, an imbalance between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids can contribute to inflammation and may increase the risk of various health issues such as heart disease and autoimmune disorders. Another concern is the use of antibiotics in commercial pork production. These drugs are often used to promote growth and prevent disease in densely populated pig farms, but they can contribute to antibiotic resistance, a significant public health concern. Now let's talk about the benefits of opting for pasture-raised pork. Pasture-raised pigs are allowed to roam freely and forage for their natural diet, which includes grass, roots, and insects. This lifestyle not only leads to happier pigs, but also to a healthier product. 
Pasture-raised pork has a more balanced ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids, making it less likely to contribute to inflammation. It's also higher in vitamin E and iron. Vitamin E is a potent antioxidant that helps protect our cells from damage, while iron is essential for oxygen transportation and energy production. Furthermore, pasture-raised pigs are less likely to be given antibiotics routinely, reducing the risk of antibiotic resistance. So while it might be a bit more costly, choosing pasture-raised pork can provide a healthier fat profile and more nutrients, making it a better choice. Now, we're into the top three. At number three, we have red meat, and at number two, fish. Red meat and fish are complete proteins, meaning they provide all the essential amino acids our bodies need. They're also rich in other nutrients, like B vitamins, iron, and zinc. But not all red meat and fish are created equal. Let's start with red meat. Commercially raised red meat often comes from animals fed with grains, leading to a less healthy fat profile and lower nutrient density. These animals are also typically given antibiotics and hormones, which can make their way into the meat we consume. On the other hand, grass-fed meat comes from animals that have been raised on a natural diet of grass, just like their ancestors. This results in meat that's higher in nutrients and contains healthier fats including omega-3 fatty acids which are beneficial for heart health. Now, let's dive into fish. Farmed fish can be problematic due to their diet and living conditions. They're often fed a diet of grains and antibiotics, and crowded conditions can lead to disease. Plus, farmed fish typically have lower levels of omega-3 fatty acids compared to their wild-caught counterparts. Wild-caught fish, conversely, eat a natural diet and live in their natural habitat. This results in fish with a superior nutrient profile, including higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids and lower levels of contaminants. But it's important to be mindful of sustainability when choosing wild-caught fish. Overfishing is a real concern, so it's best to opt for species that are not overfished and to buy from reputable suppliers. Choosing grass-fed meat and wild-caught fish can provide a healthier fat profile, more nutrients, and superior amino acid profiles making them excellent choices. Remember, the quality of your protein sources is just as important as the quantity. So, choose wisely and enjoy the benefits of these top-ranking proteins. And finally, at number one, we have eggs. Often dubbed as nature's multivitamin, eggs are a complete protein packed with essential nutrients and healthy fats. They contain all nine essential amino acids, making them a prime source of protein. But it's not just the protein that makes eggs a nutritional powerhouse. They're a rich source of vitamins including A, B2, B5, B12, and E, and minerals such as iron, iodine, and selenium. But the nutritional profile of an egg can significantly vary based on the hen's diet and lifestyle. Commercially raised eggs are often produced by hens fed a grain-based diet, confined in cages with limited space to move around. This not only raises animal welfare concerns, but can also affect the nutritional quality of the eggs. On the other hand, pasture-raised eggs come from hens that roam freely on pastures, pecking on plants and insects, mimicking their natural behavior. This diet and lifestyle result in eggs with a healthier fat profile. They contain higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids, which are beneficial for heart health. These eggs also have more vitamins and minerals, contributing to their superior nutrient density. One might argue that the cholesterol content in eggs is a concern. However, numerous studies suggest that dietary cholesterol doesn't necessarily raise blood cholesterol levels or increase heart disease risk in most people. It's the saturated and trans fats that are the real culprits. Moreover, eggs are incredibly versatile and can be incorporated into any meal, be it a hearty breakfast, a quick lunch, or a nutritious dinner, eggs fit right in making it easy to include this excellent protein source in your diet. Of course, it's essential to remember that a balanced diet includes a variety of protein sources. No single source can provide all the nutrients we need. But in terms of nutrient density, versatility, and bioavailability of protein, eggs definitely take the crown. Choosing pasture-raised eggs can provide a healthier fat profile, more nutrients, and superior amino acid profiles making them the best choice. Before we wrap up, let's talk about a bonus protein source, whey protein. Frequently used in protein shakes and bars, 
Whey protein is a complete protein, containing all nine essential amino acids. It's often considered the most bioavailable and digestible protein, making it an excellent choice for those looking to boost their protein intake. But like any protein source, it's not without its drawbacks. While whey protein is nutrient dense, it's just a single nutrient. It lacks the variety of nutrients found in whole foods. This means that while it's a great way to supplement your protein intake, it should not replace a varied and balanced diet. Fun fact, whey protein is a byproduct of cheese making. It's the liquid remaining after milk has been curdled and strained. It's then processed into a powder form, which is used in protein supplements. So next time you're drinking your protein shake, remember, you're consuming a byproduct of cheese. It's best used as a supplement, not a replacement for a balanced diet. Now that we've gone through the list, let's summarize. We've explored the world of protein, from soy and plant proteins to animal sources like poultry, pork, red meat, fish, and eggs. Each has its pros and cons, but the common thread is the importance of how these proteins are raised or grown. Soy and plant proteins may seem like convenient options, but they come with significant drawbacks, such as lower bioavailability, anti-nutrients, and potential heavy metal contamination. In the realm of animal proteins, the way the animal is raised can greatly influence the nutrient density and overall health benefits of the protein. Poultry and pork offer complete proteins, but their nutritional profile can be compromised if they're not pasture-raised. Red meat and fish are nutrient-dense options, especially when sourced from wild-caught or grass-fed animals. Eggs, a versatile and accessible protein source, shine when they come from pasture-raised hens. Remember, the best protein sources are those that come from their natural environment, consuming what they evolved to eat. Choose your food wisely. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay informed.